The idea for flow has been with me for a while. Philadelphia Sculptors has smaller, more manageable, more moderate shows, and then we have what we call our big shows. This is one of those. I'm Leslie Kaufman. I'm president of Philadelphia Sculptors, and I'm also one of the curators for our exhibition, Flow. We plan for this at least two years in advance. My idea that just kind of came out of nowhere was to do a show of floating sculptures. It will hopefully allow people to understand how creative uses of materials, of ideas, that artists can combine art with science. What inspires me is the process that goes into a work of art. Sometimes the public doesn't see that process. And the process often is, in some cases, more important than the final product. That alone, the process, the decision-making, thought to finish, really inspires me when I look at a work of art. My name is Elaine Crivelli, and I'm the co-curator of the Flow Exhibition. We are in Quebec City, and we do a public art event in Quebec City called Passage Insolite, or Unusual Passages. So they heard about a guy, uh, some people in Quebec who do in public art, and they was looking for a floating art. We call each other. I came here last last year, and then inviting uh, three artists: so Jean-Yves, uh, Fanny, uh, Isabelle, and uh, Georgia. So now we're here. It's an uh, art collaboration, but it's also a human collaboration. Yeah, we're pretty happy to be here. It's a great opportunity for artists today to use their skills to reach out to people in ways that aren't hitting you over the head. Like, I've heard that a million times. I know, you know, I shouldn't use plastic bags, but you know, what happens to those plastic bags? Well, when you see that an artist is making use of decoys that are part plastic, it's a way of saying, okay, the plastics are becoming part of our environment in very unhealthy ways. We're interested in having um, an environmental message. We want to call attention to these environmental concerns and especially the impact of plastics, not just on bird species and waterways, but you know across the planet. I think for both of us, the idea of the floating sculpture was really an exciting idea and provided an opportunity to try and work with materials and narrative in a new way. Many artists are more interested in making larger statements with their art. The movements towards environmental art, towards uh, art that includes social practice, these are ways of connecting artists with the rest of the world. It started by an idea, the fact that I was born on a small island, living on the shore, and people used to, when I was a kid, we used to throw everything in the water. All the garbage were going in the water or on the shore, hoping that the wave will come like a big tongue and wipe it off. So this is how I started working with the plates, putting plates on the shore so the wave would come and lick the plates. What, what I created is a piece with plates that goes up and down with the tide. It's kind of a reference to Monet, uh, water flowers. So normally I do a lot of things with fiber and fabric, and dresses are part of what I do. Addressing the Delaware uh, with a dress that symbolizes the water rising. So every stage has been sort of a challenge, and I'm used to that. I always do things that I'm sort of um, out there trying to figure out, so it's been great. We knew that it would be challenging to work in the water, but the challenges that have come up during the process have really been interesting to work with. So it's one thing, you know, to be working outdoors. It's another thing to be constructing a piece that will survive on the water for three months. When you think about having a show that's inside, 
The room doesn't change, the floor doesn't change, the wind doesn't change, and most likely it's not raining. When we proposed this idea, we knew that one of the biggest challenges would be weather. And you have no idea how strong it is until you watch the water batter something around. The tides are going so many different ways, so in order for pieces not to pull apart, the anchoring system had to be just so. I have all the confidence in the world that they will come through and get their pieces in when they need to. Yep. Then the challenge was how to get them into the water because these pieces did not come here as one big piece. They all came in smaller segments that had to be assembled. Was there any challenges like building it like in the process that you faced? <laughs> <laughs> There's the always mud. challenges. The mud. <laughs> as much planning as everybody put into it, when it comes down to it, there are always going to be things that you can't completely control. Somebody told me that there was some mud at the bottom, but we thought it was a bit of mud. No, this mud. <laughs> so we had to find a trick. The trick we found is that to get some plywood under the grid so the grid will not just sink into the mud. That's what we had to decide on site here. You know, when we think about the environment and the water, we think about scientists, researchers, environmentalists give us factual information. But with artists, they can take that information and help us as viewers to think about the same things in very different ways. There are less and less space for uh, salvage animals, so uh, basically that's what we, are, we were thinking about. And that's why they are really, uh, you know, colorful and they're really fantastic and light, uh, full of light because uh, they want some space. From here, we can see on the dock and the people, oh, good, yeah, and they are cheering us. There are many ways of looking at interpreting and understanding art. It can be that you just look at it and whatever you take from it, you take from it. But I personally believe it's helpful to give somebody a way in. I think that this is a way that we can at least encourage people to see artists as people who have creative ways of addressing problems, sometimes solving them, but at least bringing attention to them.
That was fantastic. It can be art in any form, whatever it is. I want the artwork to speak to me so that I can speak back to it, you know, so I can have that conversation back and forth. I mean, my hope is that people can embrace art and understand how to interact with it and be with it and not try to always try to figure it out. So artists really challenge us to imagine our relationship with the water, with the environment, and how we interact with it. <laughs> 